Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and today we are talking about five plants that you should just buy big. So there's a lot of houseplants out there that will grow pretty quickly from a small plant to a large plant, but there's some that I feel like you should just buy them big. So today we're gonna to talk about that, but first wanted to give a big shout out to Casetify for sponsoring this video. We'll talk more about them later. The first plant that you should just buy big is the fiddle leaf fig. Now this one comes with like nine asterisks because I want to make it clear that a lot of people buy the fiddle leaf fig as their first house plant and I think that is a terrible idea. There are certain plants that just should not be your first house plant and that is definitely in like the top three. <laughs> so lots of people buy them because they want like an architectural tree in their home, but they don't exactly understand that fiddle leaf figs can be a little bit picky. They are ficus, and in my opinion, ficus are a little bit more touch and go. They have a tendency to drop leaves. They don't like being moved. They don't like drafts. They're just a little bit uh, diva-ish, if I, if I can say so myself. <laughs> so I would suggest not buying a fiddle leaf fig as your first plant, but if you have had plants for a while and you want a fiddle leaf fig, you're feeling like you're ready for that, I would suggest buying one that's already big because they do take a while to get quite large. And if you're looking for that huge statement plant and you're willing to drop some money on it, I think that that's a good way to go. And you don't even necessarily need to buy like the eight foot fiddle leaf fig. I'm just saying I see a lot of stores and people buying like fiddle leaf figs that are just like basically a tip cutting and it's no more than one or two feet tall. I think that people buy that in hopes that it will eventually become a tree and it's gonna take like 10 years before it actually becomes that like huge architectural tree that everybody wants. With that in mind, I would say buy a fiddle leaf fig that is at least four feet tall, three minimum, and it will get to that taller height faster because you're buying it larger. I know that in the past fiddle leaf figs were pretty pricey, but I noticed now that the price has gone down quite a bit. I think that plant prices are slowly creeping down. I hope it stays that way. We'll just have to see and watch the market, but definitely look for a good deal and get a fiddle leaf fig that is at least three to four feet tall to begin with. The next plant that you should just buy big is a Sansevieria or snake plant. I have this snake plant right here. This was featured in the thumbnail. And since I've had it, I've had it for, I wanna say like four, three, four years, and in that time, it's only put out these two little fins right here. So this is a whale fin. So it's a little bit different than other snake plants in that the leaves are very wide, but it has like the same growth tendencies, I would say, so that's why I grabbed this one. But I have other snake plants around my house that honestly, I have not seen do much of anything, and they had lots of light, lots of water. They got pretty much exactly what they needed, but some plants just tend to grow slower. And I would say that uh, Sansevieria or Dracaena in general happen to be one of those plants that is just very slow taking their time. And also it doesn't help that a lot of people will buy these types of plants to put in darker corners of their home, which is definitely allowed as long as that plant is getting light. It doesn't need to be super direct light, but you can't put these in a dark corner and expect them to live forever. So I would say just in general, plants like this do tend to get put in darker spots. So they're going to grow even slower. <laughs> so if your goal is to have a really big, full, beautiful snake plant, definitely just buy it big already. It's a little bit more expensive depending on where you live, but I have seen larger Sansevierias going from anywhere from 50 to $100. And I think that's just a much better use of your money because you will have the vision right away rather than waiting for your tiny snake plant to turn into this huge, beautiful plant. It's just probably not gonna happen for a very, very, very long time. And I would just suggest to buy it big so that you don't even have to wait and you already have the plant that you're imagining. I think basically what I'm saying is if you have like an image of a plant and you want to use it as a part of your decor and you have the right lighting for it, just buy the plant how you want it to look eventually. 
and you'll be much happier because yeah if you buy a little guy and you're just like hoping and waiting for it to achieve that size you're gonna be waiting a very long time as i mentioned earlier this video is sponsored by case to buy case to buy makes phone cases that are proudly made of 65 percent recycled and plant-based materials so if you're upgrading your phone and you have a bunch of phone cases lying around that you're not going to be using anymore you can send those into case to buy and they will get recycled and made into new phone cases so not only are you recycling your old phone cases but you'll get a special discount for your next purchase Purchase. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. This first one is another one from Bodil Jane. I think I've talked about them like every time I've worked with Tasteify because I really, really love their art. It is so cute. I figured that the strawberries would be perfect for summer. And then I have a custom case right here. So if you didn't know, Tasteify can also make custom cases. You can customize the words, the colors. I have like really cute sparkly bits on the ends here. And that is with the Recasetify. These are all Recasetify cases, as I said earlier. So I love phone cases that have cute quotes on them. And I thought that this was cute, but not cheesy. And also this one is their ultra impact case, which is drop protected up to 9.8 feet. So I'm gonna pop this on my phone and we are going to check out this Chi Tech technology drop protection. That looks so good. Okay, so as you can see, my phone is intact. So I'm just gonna stand up and drop it, like hold it up really high. You'll see it fall. There we go. <laughs> and it looks great and then the last case is another custom case and it says dlp on it and i got like this nice like blue and white lettering it looks so cute dlp for de la plants <laughs> the cases are also 100 percent non-hazardous and non-toxic so if you are looking for a new phone case to keep your phone protected and looking very cute definitely check out Casetify. they are wireless charging compatible so you won't have to take it on and off as well um, i have a code for you you can go to casetify.com plants to get 15 percent off Casetify's new Recasetify collection today thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it the next plant on this list is the zz zz's tend to also be slow growers it just takes a while for for them to get big and for them to get full and i will say that zz's in my experience do grow faster than the snake plants i had a snake plant and a zz in pretty much the same conditions and the zz was putting out new growth more often but because the zz grows like individual stakes like one at a time it takes a bit longer for those to you know fully produce and come out and be big it's just a longer process and although you might be spending a little bit more money up front for a larger zz i feel like if a plant doesn't grow too fast and it's not changing very much from month to month it is worth it just to buy it big with ZZs, there is the green variety and then there is the raven variety. So the raven variety is a really, really, really deep, dark green plant. And the regular green ZZ is exactly what it sounds like. It stays green and they're really easy to propagate too, but they take a long time to propagate because they have to grow like an entire rhizome, which will eventually put out pups. You can propagate a ZZ by leaf cutting or stem cutting or by just separating the rhizomes. And in all of those ways of propagating, I have found them to be very, very slow. So for that reason, just buy the ZZ big and call it a day. The next plant that you should buy large are Dracaena. And the reason that I say this is because Dracaena are just, again, slow growers. I have seen a lot of Dracaena out there, like the corn plant Dracaena or like the Dracaena marginata. When I see those plants like in other people's collections, I haven't had either of those Dracaena myself. I have had other other Dracaena, but not those ones specifically. But anyway, those are the ones that are more like tree growth type of thing. And I find that those pretty much look exactly the same at all times. Like they'll put out a new leaf, but then they'll lose a leaf on the bottom. So it pretty much always looks like it's the same size. And there is a squirrel that is absolutely teasing my dog right now. My dog is glued to this, the sliding glass door because there's a squirrel that's just like running back and forth. Like there's a lot of wildlife out right now. It's a particularly warm day. So I feel like they're out like gathering food, like time to hit the grocery store with all the snow melting. Hey, 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 it's okay. He's providing for his family. It's okay. I just feel like those plants don't really look that different as they get bigger. Maybe they'll get taller, but really what I find is that those puffs of foliage is what gets bigger. And then as it gets bigger, it's losing foliage on the bottom. So it doesn't really look that different at the end. So if you're wanting that really beautiful, like architectural look of a plant, 
definitely just buy it big already. Again, it is more expensive to buy them big, but I just hate to see people buying them so tiny, just like thinking that it'll become so big within a couple of months or even like a year from now. It will grow, but it's just not going to be the dramatic change that people think it's going to be. I feel like I should do a follow-up video that is plants that you should buy small because there's a lot of plants that have like a total opposite experience where they get so big so fast. So it's like you don't even need to buy it big. It's almost a waste to buy it big. So let me know if you want to hear that video too. Uh, because I'm thinking right now like I'm I'm like should I even post this video because this all seems very obvious But if you are very new to houseplants, you might not know I know that for me when I first got into houseplants I really gravitated towards the small plants and didn't realize that they would stay small like pretty much for years <laughs> Okay, the last plant on this list the last just general type of plant that you should buy big if you're wanting a big plant is just in general cacti so cacti depending on where you're living is slow growing um, if, unless you have it out in full sun good heat it's probably going to be growing like very very minimally um, not a lot of people can have their cactus outside or maybe some people are nervous to put their cactus outside but if you are wanting to have cactus please, please put it outside in the summertime if you can. You can do things like ease it out, like put a little shade cloth over it or even like a sheet just like to shade it um, as you, when you first put it out so that the plants aren't shocked by the sudden sun. A lot of people were concerned about my cactus living outside here in Missouri because it's so wet. It rained so much last year, but they were fine. I have honestly never seen my cactus grow so much. So unless you have the ability to put your cactus outside and you're willing to do that and transition them outside, I would suggest just buying them big to begin with because they're probably not going to grow a ton in your home unless you have a really great grow light situation plus I would say like a heat mat or something. Because the fact of the matter is cactus for the most part are full sun plants and they need that light to grow. If the plant is not getting what it needs, it's just going to sit there and it's not gonna die most likely unless it experiences rot or something, but it's not going to thrive and grow and continue getting bigger and bigger. And so if you're wanting a large look cactus, just buy it large and then put in a really, really sunny spot, preferably a south window, and just let it live its life. If you buy a little small tiny cactus in hopes that it will one day be this huge plant, it will, it will just take like 10 years. <laughs> so that's why you should buy it big. All right, you guys, that is all I have for this video today. Again, let me know if you're interested in seeing plants that are worth it to buy small or something like that, like the opposite of this video. I'm happy to do that if you're interested because as I was doing this, I was noticing that a theme like slow growing plants just buy them big. Um, but there's a lot of plants that are very fast growing that I think would do well if you bought them small and just nurtured them until they got bigger. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much to Caseify for sponsoring this video. If you would like to support my channel in additional ways, you can head down below to look at my Patreon. I've got a couple of tiers and some really awesome perks. So I would love for you to check that out and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Hit the notifications bell so that you're reminded every time I upload a video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.